Although the official announcement ending military research on dolphins is four years old, Rick Trout on his return to San Diego realizes that nothing has changed. On paper, the idea of training dolphins to carry weapons and ask them to do uh, the protection of both lives and uh, uh, very serious hardware like the Trident nuclear sub looks good. But in actuality, with the intelligent, playful creatures that marine mammals are, they would occasionally take these very serious weapons and, and uh, put them in places they didn't belong. In the case of the sea lions, they would uh, dump them and sink them in the mud in San Diego Harbor. Uh, we'd lose them for several days and they would finally work themselves loose and these uh, classified weapons would be floating around San Diego Bay for anyone to pick up. In the case of the dolphins, it was uh, not unusual for them to actually come up and in a very playful nature, rather than go and hit the diver, they would turn around and hit the pontoon boat, the rubber pontoon boat, which if it was actually a loaded weapon device would, would not have a happy ending for the people in the boat. Sea lions have a tendency to be cowardly. At the slightest suspicious noise, they do an about face and frantically throw themselves into their trainer's arms. Fortunately, the animals are only carrying simulated weapons. What actually uh, was even worse is that occasionally dolphins would lie. They would, uh, when supposed to be reporting whether or not a swimmer was in the water, they would actually start telling the wrong Truth. They would come back, a, a, a tennis ball was there to say, uh, yes, there is a diver in the water, and a paddle was pushed if a diver was not in the water. Well, there were many occasions that the dolphins who could do this with absolute accuracy would simply decide not to do it on any given day. And even when a swimmer was in the water at 1,000 feet, they'd come back and say, no, there is no swimmer. The swimmer would then be moved within visual contact, not only with the dolphin sonar, but people on the surface and the, uh, the, uh, the dolphin's uh, own eyes could see that there was a swimmer and the dolphin would still insist on coming back and they would almost with a very, very happy gleam in their eye look at the trainer and say, no, there is no swimmer in the water, almost as if to say, I'm not working today. For the U.S. Navy, the Gulf War represented a new chance for on-the-job testing. The Soviet ship Edinburgh crossed a convoy of Kuwaiti tankers on an American carrier escorted by two U.S. Navy ships. As a Pentagon representative stated, the convoy was entering the Straits of Ormuz. The Pentagon also confirmed that the American Naval Air Service is using specially trained dolphins to locate mines in the Persian Gulf. Pentagon officials told the Associated Press that experiments with dolphins have been going on ever since the Vietnam War. The project of sending a group of bomb disposal dolphins was finally rejected. Five sea soldiers, four of them Vietnam veterans, were assigned to patrol a platform of combat divers. Was the Navy having doubts about the combat readiness of their marine mammals? The civilian staff was asked to assist in some nighttime rehearsals to prepare the dolphins to work in the Persian Gulf for nighttime duty. During the seven nights that we worked this detail, not one night went according to plan. The dolphins were supposed to detect us swimming from the piers. The situations often broke down because the dolphins would run off and play with the local dolphins swimming in these waters. And in one case, the uh, only time a dolphin came anyways near accomplishing the task, a female dolphin named Slan came up close to me, but as she got close, she threw the nose cone device off of her snout, came up, put her sh chin on my shoulder, and I was eyeball to eyeball with this dolphin, and I whispered in my regulator, you're supposed to be a killer. At that point, I realized that this 
program did not work. And I confronted the director of the program at 6 o'clock the following morning and said, this doesn't work, does it? And he said, we know that. Actually, how does one explain the closeness of research and training basins to the San Diego Yacht Harbor? For a long time, top secret military projects and yachts have existed side by side. Training takes place in full view of everyone. Suppose the primary goal of the advanced biological weapons system was to instill doubt and terror in the minds of the former Soviet enemy. Suppose it was just an enormous poker bluff. The only problem is the price animals with total confidence in their trainers had to pay for it. Soldier 677, spine fracture. Number 496, death during training. Recruit 497, cardiac arrest. And the list goes on. Broken jaw, fractured skull, missing in training. Soldier 493, death by drowning. Drowning? How do you drown a dolphin? These animals basically went through uh, experiences that were extremely dangerous and put them in harm's way. They never understood it. The two sea lions who died locked up in their cages because a boat overturned, they simply went down looking back at their trainers thinking this must be a new behavior they want us to do. It takes many generations to domesticate a wild animal. Domestication is a genetic trait. Military animals do not possess it. Using marine mammals as a weapon system is an idea which is flawed by its very design. Marine mammals such as whales, dolphins, and sea lions, and these harbor seals off the coast of San Diego, California, are wild animals. And as wild animals, they are extremely unpredictable making them extremely unreliable for military-type operations. Would America want a military officer who refuses his commands on a weekly basis? Would they want a soldier who doesn't know the difference between an enemy and an ally? Would they want a submarine who has a mind of its own that would frequently go off and chase after fish? I think these answers are no. It would be just as ridiculous if the army were to train chimpanzees to shoot combat rifles. The Soviet threat no longer exists. The military's dolphin program, once made public, is very unpopular, a nightmare for the Navy's public relations service. Congress decides to call a halt to it and orders the Navy to send a first contingent of dolphins back to their native waters. Jack, Buck, and Luther, our three soldiers, are on their final mission to show that they can relearn to live in freedom. The fate of the other dolphins depends on their success. Rick O'Barry, Flipper's former trainer, spends his time today helping captive dolphins regain their freedom. The animals must redevelop a taste for hunting live fish. Too accustomed to being around humans, they must forget the human presence and restore their links with their own species. In a few weeks, Jack, Buck, and Luther will be ready for freedom. Eighteen months go by and the authorizations have not arrived. The dolphins are still there. The military cannot seem to bring itself to part with them. Perhaps they would rather put them on hold in marine parks. The result is that the three dolphins no longer understand what's expected of them. They grow bored and start fighting with each other. Jack is so aggressive, he has to be separated from his companions.
Buck and Luther also become agitated. Time is passing, and time is running out. Rick O'Barry, trainer turned vigilante, is faced with a dilemma. Free the sea soldiers without authorization and thus break the law, or wait for official permission and possibly endanger the entire project. We've had them out here for 11 days following the boat. Very fast speeds, building up their muscles, getting ready for the day of release. They're both in very, very good shape, physically, uh, mentally, they seem to be. We've taken blood tests, uh, the blood looks good. There's no reason to keep them in captivity any longer. So we're going to free them, and we're going to free them tomorrow. The decision is made, but speed is important if they are to avoid the Coast Guard. If they are caught, they'll be arrested. And if they're arrested, the dolphins will remain in captivity. This whistle that he's making, that's his real name. That's a signature whistle. His name is not really Buck. That's his real name. Calling out, telling us his real name. Normally, Buck and Luther should be released into the Mississippi Delta, where they were captured in the dark waters abounding with fish and where they can find their original families. But acting illegally forces the men to set them free in the clear turquoise waters of Florida. What are their chances of survival under these conditions? We've reached our final destination, I think. This is the spot. Many dolphin here, lots of schooling fish. It's a very good environment for them. We've been monitoring these dolphins for a very long time and never seen any shark scars on any of them. They seem to uh, have a pretty good life out here. In just a few seconds, the soldiers will return to civilian life at last. Okay, here we go. go. They're finally back home. Dolphins at sea once again. Will Buck and Luther find a family? What memories will they retain of their tour of duty? What kind of wild dolphins will they become? Nobody knows. We can only hope. A week later, as Buck and Luther are begging for food, they are picked up and returned to the San Diego base. For them, their taste of freedom was just another training exercise. A great deal of time and effort was put into trying to get two dolphins uh, from here, Luther and Buck, uh, from these pens back to their home waters. Unfortunately, the, the effort uh, was at least a, a false start, and those two animals are back here. 
some more work and some great hope, we will hopefully give some of these animals a chance to go back to their home waters in Mississippi. Dozens of animals are still at American military installations, and new Russian bases are opening in Moscow and Utrinsky. It would seem that the dream of communicating with dolphins is not dead, nor is the hope of making them man's allies. <laughs>